This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello, and welcome to the 1000 Author Show. I am Vicky Quinn Fraser, and today I have got a bit of a treat for you. I have been talking to author and business owner, Kathy Scott, who is the author of this book here, Rubbing Shoulders with the Best, um, which is super cool. Um, brought her on the show to talk about why she wrote the book, what she's working on next, and yeah, just any tips that she might have for people writing their own books. So I thoroughly enjoyed talking to her. I hope you enjoy this chat too, and I will see you on the other side. Hello, Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me here on the 1000 Authors Show. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, we're going to be chatting today. Um, Kathy and I are going to be chatting about her book, uh, which is called Rubbing Shoulders with the Best, Growing a Massage Business Without the Stress, which I love because, you know, massages, stress, all the rest of it. Um, and Kathy runs a business called Hands On at Work. So uh, before we dig into your book, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, certainly. Um, Hands On at Work is basically a corporate massage business. So what we do is we take in massage chairs into businesses to give people a break during the day. So all part of the, the health and well-being. Um, and it's, it's I always have to think about it because I know what the massage chair looks like. And as soon as you say massage chair, a lot of people think of these huge plug-in things that you find at airports, you know, yeah. <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> It's one way you sort of, it's, it's a nice small chair where people sort of um, sit with their, their face in a, in a cradle so that you can really sort of get into sort of like the back, neck and shoulders and give them a real good pummeling. So the, the idea is one, so that they take a break, get away from their work. And um, secondly, give them a really good massage, give them a good stretch so that they feel all sort of revitalized and energized or they want to fall asleep, one of the two. But anyway, they've had a relax, <laughs> which is the main thing. Um, and that's been going now for 11 years. And um, yeah, we, we started off with, with just sort of me and one other helping me out. And we've now probably got about 100 plus therapists on the books. Gosh. So um, we went from just sort of like Worcestershire, which is where we were based, um, to across the UK now. And yeah, and then it's going really well. And people just love to see us <laughs> turn That's up with the massage cute. chair and it's yay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just sitting here thinking, I, I love that idea. I love the idea of just being able to be like, oh, you know what? I just, I just fancy a break. I'm just going to pop upstairs at work and get a massage. That's great. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's and okay, really so <laughs> let's talk a bit about your book, because part of the reason that I love the fact that you've written a book is I think that you are in a profession where a lot of people would be like, well, I can't write a book because, you know, it's, it's not a traditional, it's not the traditional, you know, it's, it's not on, it's not coaching, it's not life coaching, it's not writing, it's not marketing, it's not any of the kind of traditional businesses that you would think is obvious to write a book. So can you tell us a bit about why you decided to write a book? Yeah, um, probably only just over the 12 months ago, it actually came to mind of I could write a book about this. Um, I think partly, or partly it was obviously the, the lockdown, first lockdown last year, because all close contact services, which obviously we come under, came to a, a complete stop. But just prior to that, probably the, the back end of 2019, I was actually do, invited onto a podcast with um, somebody I, I know, a local businessman who, who does therapies, but he's also a coach and one thing, another. And he said they wanted to do um, a series of podcasts, one of them being the mass massage benefits. And would I do it? So I said, yes, OK. So we were doing that. And then afterwards, we were just chatting about, oh, how did you get into massage? Because I haven't always done massage. I used to work in the legal profession before that. Um, that really wasn't me. <laughs> they decided I didn't want to do that for another 20 years, you know, and just gave it up. And that was before I even thought about massage. And it was just talking to him. And he said, you know, I think people would be interested in that. They'd be interested in your journey and why you swapped and, you know, and what the benefits are now that you're getting out of, of doing the massage as a business. And up until then, I suppose I was just the same as most other people. Of why would anybody be interested in me? You know, I haven't got a story. But it must have been there in my head. And then 
I, <laughs> it sounds awful, Vicky, but I've been stalking you for a few years. <laughs> Because I came across you a few years before when you were a guest speaker um, on a digital marketing course that I was doing. And I remember thinking, oh, yeah, I like you. I can sort of feel I can connect with you. So I signed up for your emails. So I've been getting your your email blogs every day for, you know. And, and then in February last year, you did this 29 day challenge of writing something every day. And of course, some of those subjects were business related. So and I and I really, really enjoyed doing it. And so come March, when everything sort of closed down, I suppose the thought of Rob saying people would be interested, you know, and and what I'd written with you on on the the 29 day challenge, I thought I could. uh, Yeah, I could do this. I'm going to give it a go. And so then I bought your book, How the Hell Do You Write a Book? (laughs) Spent Easter, you know, looking through that and thought, yeah, here we go. We're going to do this. So that really was the, the start of it. Amazing. I'm, I'm so glad. I'm glad that um, the, was it Rob on the podcast? Yes. Yeah. I'm glad that he, I'm glad that he prompted you and said you could write a book about this. And I'm really glad that you listened to him because what you said is, I hear that from so many people. It's like, well, I haven't really got a story. What, what have I got to do? Because, um, and I literally did a masterclass about this last night about the tiny stories and how we think that unless we've got a big dramatic rags to riches story, that nobody's going to want to hear it. And actually, that the story, your story, I think, is, is probably very common. People becoming disillusioned with the career that they've picked or the job they've got and think and you're, you're the outlier in the fact that most people will will just live with it. You know, they'll, they'll carry on and they'll do their thing. You were like, no, I'm not, you know, I've had enough of, of this job. It's like maybe you didn't hate it. You know, it's just not for you, mm. not for you. And so you're like, I want to do something else. So can you tell us a bit about that? Because I'm interested. What made you just <laughs> up and leave a decent profession? <laughs> wow. I was I was effectively a property lawyer. I never went, we'll start off, I said, I never went to university. I left school at 16. Um, basically, sort of back in the 70s, career advice was, ugh, was awful. One, they used to separate the girls from the boys to start with. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the careers advice was basically, you know, work in a bank, be a nursery nurse or join the forces. Didn't want to do any of those. Wow. Um, so I just left and got a dead end job. Um, which effectively was an admin job in a local authority and um, and it wasn't long before I was thinking I can do more than this anyway it was a chance conversation with a, a solicitor who came in because I was doing um, searches when people buy houses and they have to do searches and effectively and this was pre-computers of course as well so it was all day ticking off yes no yes no answers you know anyway she told me about um, the institute of legal executives where you can basically study part-time so I thought right I'm going to do this so <laughs> so I started studying part-time so it took me four years uh, to do that to qualify then as a legal exec so I don't think there was ever anything inside me that said, you really want to be a lawyer. <laughs> it was more to get myself out of a dead end job, to be honest. Um, so, but, you know, having said that, I, I did enjoy it. And, but I think, again, it was with this conversation with, with Rob that he sort of said, well, that's your why, why you were doing it, because you like to help people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was that side of it that I did enjoy I think towards the end, um, I'd been working for high street firms, which was great. And then I decided I wanted to do more commercial work, you know, joined this sort of larger firm in Birmingham, started doing that. And then there was a a change of um, senior partner and it was a financial partner who took over. And the emphasis then to me seemed to be more on how how much can you bill this month? And I thought, well, where's the client care gone? Very Mm. altruistic, you know, (laughs) where's the client care gone? Um, And I just thought, I'm not enjoying this anymore. And and so I suppose that was it really, sort of thinking, ah, I didn't really want to be here anyway, did I? <laughs> so um, that's why I did. But at the time, I didn't have any idea what I wanted to do, but I'd worked out I could probably survive for about 12 months. <laughs> so I literally just gave my notice in and went, bye. Um, I and I did, I did a bit of locum work for a while just to sort of pay the mortgage and the bills, you know, sort of thing. But um and then it got to the end of 2007 when the bank crisis hit in and all this. And I thought, well, no one's going to want a property locum. What do you want to do? Mm-hmm. And somebody somewhere must have thrown this seed in my head of an idea of massage. I hadn't even been for that many myself up to then. I was one of these people of, oh, you know, oh, it's my birthday. I'll treat myself. <laughs> you know, now I say, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> but um yeah, and so I just looked up on the internet, found a course in the Cotswolds, thought, oh, it's 
pretty down there. We'll do this. Pay my money. And um, and I've always said that it's a good job I paid my money before I actually actually looked at the course content because all the anatomy and physiology you have to learn. It was just, mm. oh, I failed my biology O level. What am I going to do? <laughs> and I struggled, um, but I got through it. And I have to say after that, I just thought, this is it. I found it now. This is what I love doing. So, um, yeah. So we took it from there. <laughs> Such a cool story. And there are so many threads that I want to grab and pull out of it. Um, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna start by saying I love your decision making process. Um <laughs> and the reason it's like, oh the Cotswolds looks pretty, I'll go down there and learn this. <laughs> yeah. But I love that because it's we are told, you know, we're told for quite a young age, well, you've got to have a plan, you've got to decide what you want to do, and you've got to, you know, this is your life all laid out. And I don't think that works for a lot of people. And and I love the fact yeah. that you know, right from the very start, whether it was conscious or probably unconscious, you your mindset seems to have been, I'm not going to do what's expected of me, you know, right from the start, <laughs> like, I don't want to do any of those things that yeah. girls are supposed to do. And yeah, I just love the fact that you, you know, you don't have to, I'm, I talk about smashing the patriarchy quite a lot, but you can also chip away at it quietly. And I think that's what you've been doing throughout your yeah, life. Yeah, I always say I'm quietly rebellious. <laughs> I love that and I yeah so that's such a great story and I think that if people are people listening to this if you're wondering if your story you know doesn't sound exciting enough then I think that hopefully you've been captivated by Kathy's story right now and been like yeah this is you know you've seen a bit of yourself in that I know that I have and so thank you for sharing that it's, it's just very very cool <laughs> um yeah chipping away at the patriarchy one one pebble at a time it's great <laughs> Um, okay, so let's talk about the book a little bit because um, I, I just think it, I think it's fantastic that you wrote a book in the first place, obviously, because that's what I do. But can you talk a little bit about the process? What did you did you enjoy writing it? What did you find difficult? What did you find easy? Um, tell me. Yeah, I, I, I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I think again, this goes back to sort of like you know when when I was a child I used to absolutely love stories I used to love books you know you used to get yourself sort of into a book and then you'd put yourself into one of the you know pretend you were one of the characters you know and all this sort of thing and I just absolutely loved it and the only subject really at school that I thoroughly enjoyed was English literature you know um it was the only great day I got um so and then I don't know I suppose as time goes on you either you forget about it or it's knocked out of you <laughs> and I suppose as well that the those years when I was studying as well you know other books just sort of were put to one side so I'd almost sort of forgotten I suppose how much I actually enjoyed it um so yeah so I think when I sort of started the book obviously I'd, I'd had this sort of precursor by doing your 29 day challenge which I really enjoyed so that sort of started me off um and I, th I think it I mean a lot of it was I have to say so a lot of it was your mentoring and the way you sort of put in your book um you know the the, the different stages and the first bit of really just get it all out there you know just just get it all on 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 paper on the screen whatever um and then I mean obviously you, you sort of talk about outline and I had that in my mind but I think it was just this being given permission if you like to just go <laughs> and and that was great because you know I'd, I'd sort of do it and then when I wasn't at the computer oh, I thought something else you know <laughs> and and it's it was just great and it, it was just so sort of uplifting really and and you know sort of lining bed at three o'clock in the morning oh <laughs> thought of something else <laughs> didn't go on the computer then but you know <laughs> that sort of thing so I, I thoroughly enjoyed that um and then sort of after I'd, I'd got it all down then sort of working out you know what was going to go where and again sort of going by the guidance on your book and I, I just found that so useful because you know I, I could quite easily have ended up with something um but it it definitely wouldn't be sort of in the format that it is now. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I, I, I just enjoyed the whole process, really. It was just sort of after I'd sort of done all the writing and then sort of thinking all about sort of like formatting and stuff like that. That's when I just, when I started faffing around and had to scream at you for some help. <laughs> but up until then, it was great. <laughs> and, you know, there, there always does come a point where people are like, Ah, I'm kind of stuck. And um, yeah. I mean, you know, some people, some people struggle right at the beginning with the idea. Some people struggle with um, the first draft. Some people struggle, a lot of people struggle with editing and, you know, your struggle came, I guess, with, with the layout and stuff. But yeah. um, 
and I, I should I should point out as well that I I have had very little. Yes, I helped you with the layout and and you know a little bit of um, polishing, but I had very little to do with with this book. You did it yourself. <laughs> and, yeah. No. And so yeah, that's that's incredible. Um, but you know, I, I know you struggled with the with the layout and stuff at the end, and that's where and you know that's where it can get tricky because it's a bit more technical. But did you have any moments in the writing of the book where you kind of got stuck or you had any obstacles, or did you just find that it flowed and and it was? I. Yeah, I did. When I was sort of trying to think um, about the person actually reading it, you know, and sort of thinking, right, well, you know, what are they getting out of this? Um, And yeah, so although I'd sort of put it into sort of chunks, I think I I did change um, quite a few times what the purpose of each chapter was about, you know, sort of I, I've sort of I thought, thought, right, okay, so th- this is the problem. This is what I'm solving. But then I thought, no, actually, that's not right. <laughs> and so, so I have, so I revisited things quite a few times. I have to say, and sort of, and then thought of a different angle of how to get my point across. Um, and and so, you know, I suppose in that way, that took quite a bit of time. But um, but I think when I when I'd got it to the point where I thought, yeah, this is right. I knew that it felt right then, you know, sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so I suppose in some ways that was a bit frustrating you know, because I thought, well, I know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know, but is that how somebody else would perceive it, you know, sort of thing? But, yeah, but yeah, no, um, yeah, it, it wasn't sort of, oh, yeah, this is great, this is easy, here you are, <laughs> I've done my book. <laughs> And that was perfectly normal as well to like come back to, um, you know, come back to all aspects of it again and again and think, oh, would it work better this way or this way? And 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 that's, you know, the, as far as I'm concerned, it's the only way really to write because nothing ever comes out perfect the first time. And, you know, yeah. you'll read stuff back and think, oh, that's not quite what I meant. Reading it out loud. Did you did you ever read it out loud to yourself? No, I didn't. Actually, I didn't even think about doing that. Perhaps I ought to have done, actually. Because I have found, and this is really this is really interesting. When I made my audio book, which I hadn't done before, and so I'd, I'd written the audio book, but I hadn't really spoken it. And when I came to speak it, there were quite a few instances where I was reading out loud what I'd written, and I was like, "Oh, you know what? That doesn't land quite right in audio." And and it, you know, it sounded a lot harsher when I said it out loud than when mm. than when I didn't. And my my style is different from yours, so I don't think any of yours would actually sound harsh, and I would have picked up on it if it did. But I I would be interested um, to know if you ever do turn it into an audio book what you find um, that you think, mm. oh, I'm just going to change that for the audio because it's not that it's wrong in printed. It's just that it it lands differently when you say it out loud. So um, for when you write your next book, Kathy, I thoroughly recommend <laughs> reading it out loud. And um, yeah, are you going to write another book? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's kind of addictive, isn't it? You write one and it's yeah. like, hmm, what can I write next? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, before we, I've got a couple more questions for you about this book, but what what's your next book? Can you give us a little tease? Well, what I want to do, it's not a business book, but it's not fiction either. Um, I want to write, I've already started doing notes on this. I want to write a book effectively about um, growing up in the 1960s and 1970s, because I was born in the early 1960s. Um, and the reason, but, and the only thing I am struggling with at the moment is um, what angle I would I would take on that, because the thing that really really annoys me and niggles me is when you see um on Facebook quite often there's posts of saying oh you know if you were born in 60s and 70s you know we ate dirt we did this we did and we survived you know I don't want to do that (laughs) that's not what I'm after it wasn't a better time it was a different time and and that's basically what I want to sort of get over that it was a different time of growing up but I think particularly at the moment as well with and quite rightly so all sort of um things to do with sort of like racism sexism da 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 you know because when I was growing up it was an age full of (laughs) racism sexism ageism any ism you can think of it was there and and that's what I grew up with and obviously now a lot of things when I sort of think back it makes me cringe you know sort of you know what we used to put up with and just how generally things were and I just think you know there's a lot of people maybe sort of who weren't born till the 1980s or what happened that perhaps wouldn't actually really know about that sort of thing so again it would have been something that you know say 18 months ago I just thought well, who would have been interested in that you know I just had a very yeah, thankfully non-traumatic <laughs> 
what I would class as ordinary, you know, upbringing. But I do think there's a lot there that, you know, could be said. So that's that's the sort of thing I'm working on. I'm really glad I asked because I can't wait to read it. Because <laughs> I'm, honestly, I'm, I'm about to do, I'm just started a project with my mum and my grandma where I'm making them write their, you know, their, their memories and I'm, I'm going to turn it into something at some point. But Oh, yeah, um, de- definitely do that because that's the one thing that I think particularly people in my generation never did or in our parents and grandparents wouldn't talk about things. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was lucky in a way that my dad did do some autobiographical notes of when he was growing up. He was a child, obviously, in World War Two, and, mm-hmm. and he managed to extract some information from my mum as well, you know, sort of thing. And I think I also had that in the back of my mind that that might be another book um, to, to use that. But I don't think we asked enough. So I would definitely encourage anybody just to, you know ask and ask and ask <laughs> I'm be doing a whole podcast on that at some point but I love I love the sound of, of that book and um one thing that I would suggest you do is when you're thinking of writing it have a, have a theme in mind because that will make it easier mm. for you to um to put the book together rather than I mean yeah chuck all of your memories down there but if you have a theme in mind then you'll be able to yes coalesce them and and so mm. I'm, I'm you know you've mentioned a couple of things that were important to you about all of the isms maybe that's something that you could choose maybe you could have yeah. a theme of food maybe you could have a theme of travel you know it could be anything but I'm very excited about about this about this book because I love hearing about life before I was you know around so yeah <laughs> I know an oldie Sorry? I'm an oldie no 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 you're only I think you know you're only like a a decade before me I think because I was born in 79 so I didn't have the 70s stuff I, I was an 80s 80s kid but um and again that was different as well so I'm, yeah. at some point I'll write about that anyway back to rubbing shoulders with Beth um so what have you been doing with the book since how what what's happened since you since you got the book out there so exciting <laughs> um I, I finally got it published uh first of December last year and um, and then a friend of mine, Marie, tagged me into um, a post on LinkedIn about business book awards. And she said, yeah, go on. So I thought, oh, OK, I <laughs> hadn't even heard of this before. So I'm really grateful to her. Anyway, so I entered it into the business book awards 2021, um, which was for any business book that had been written last year. And I put it in the specialist business category. <laughs> I don't know where else I'd put it. Um, anyway, it, it was shortlisted in March. So it's a finalist. So I was really chuffed about that. And then a couple of weeks ago, they had their virtual ceremony. And it was highly commended in its categories. Yeah, oh, oh, congratulations. <laughs> so I was absolutely over the moon with that. But it was lovely because the judges' comments were, they, they said um, it was brilliantly written for our audience um, and the, the full of personal sort of experiences and advice and tips um, completely to do the content was completely to do with the title of the book so in other words I didn't waffle <laughs> so yeah so I was absolutely over the moon with that so that's great um and I have had some articles in local newspapers and online magazines about the book and I've promoted it to massage training schools and colleges as well for them to review so yes so there's lots going on at the moment that's so cool congratulations I'm really I'm really chuffed that you got highly commended in the the business book awards that's amazing I'm so I'm so proud of you (laughs) it's great it's so cool um not surprised that it got all those lovely comments because it's a really good book it's a great read it's full of really good stories it's full of eye-opening stuff as well like some of, I remember some of your stories and my comments on it were like Woo, that's yeah. <laughs> really that happened and it's just like <laughs> yeah, I know you do often, not thankfully not often but occasionally you get the um, clients that you really don't want to be alone in a room with <laughs> Yes. And if you want to know more about that, dear listeners, you will need to grab a copy of Kathy's book, which is available on, where is it available? On Amazon? It's available on Amazon and it's also available from the website of rubbingshoulderswiththebest.co.uk. Fabulous. And we will pop those uh, links below so that you're in the show notes so that you can go and find them. Um, so I just have a couple more questions for you. Um First of all, if somebody's thinking of writing a book, um, what's one piece of advice that you could leave them with? Do it. 
Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Yeah, I, I would just say sort of don't don't doubt, you know, um, yourself or or what you want to write about. Um, I, I mean, I as I say, I've, I mean, I I know I keep saying this, but I did find obviously your book, How to Write a Book, was very useful because, you know, it did just it literally does give you steps one, two, and three, you know, and it breaks it the whole process down because I think the if somebody sort of said, well, I want to write a book, and the, your immediate thought is, where do I start? <laughs> and the fact that in your book that you break it down, you know, into those tiny steps really, really helps. So I would promote your book as I use that. Um, but yeah, I, I think just to sort of see it in sort of small, small steps. I did use um, some software called Scrivener. Um yeah, which I found a bit sort of confusing to start with, but I think if I, I, I just used it on a basic level, but it did help in separating various sort of parts of, of the book. So I found that very useful. So perhaps find sort of something like that that um, would help you keep on track with things and not look at it as a whole thing altogether, but just tiny little sections. Oh, super. Thank you for that advice. Thank you for thank you for your kind words. I did not ask or pay Kathy to say that. So thank you. Um, uh, but yeah, Scrivener is great. I use it in probably a similar way to you. It doesn't, I don't use it to do any of the clever formatting. I just use it for organizing my work and I find that to be absolutely that's the word I was trying to find, organizing. <laughs> and my final question is, um, well, my second to last question is, what book are you reading at the moment? What have you recently enjoyed? I have just finished an audio book I've, I've just recently got into audio books <laughs> and I think it was called The Cat That God Sent um, by Jim Krause it's I like it because I, I didn't know really what it was about the fact that it had a cat on the front probably swayed me <laughs> I would try this <laughs> um, but what I liked about it is it's about a, a, a pastor basically going to a small um, U.S town and all the prejudices if you like of the, the people there um this god-fearing community um but part of the narrative is actually from this cat's point of view because this cat just presented himself to this pastor and basically it was, it was the cat then being at the the sermons that encouraged other people to come but it was the fact that the narrative was from the cat's point of view as well as the human point of view which i found so so funny i mean so you know it's not a religious but it, it it's just a, a really good read and yeah so I've just finished that so I am now looking to search for my next one. <laughs> well um, thank you for that recommendation I'm gonna I've got a bunch of credits on Audible so I'm gonna add that to my Audible mm. list because I, I love a bit of I love an audiobook that's got that has different voices for the different characters yes. I, I think that's great and if you're looking for something similar um, or not similar it's not a similar book but um, I can thoroughly recommend um, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, who wrote The Martian. Um, I read the paper book, loved it so much that I really annoyed my husband with how much I loved it. Um, and now <laughs> both of us are listening to the audio book and the narrator is brilliant. So um, that's that's my recommendation for you and for anybody. I, I forgot we were doing a podcast. And for everybody else who's listening as well. It's like, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so where can we find out more about you, Kathy? Where can we buy your book? Where can we find out more about you? Well, <laughs> um, you can find out about well um, i've got some like the the, the business website is hands on at work.co.uk and it's got all the usual sort of facebook instagram twitter linkedin all that sort of thing and for the book as i say there's a website robin shoulders with the best.co.uk and you can get the book from there um or amazon if you want <laughs> and then we won't me. give all the money to jeff we'll give all the money to <laughs> yeah um <laughs> and so far as like the the massage is concerned i mean you know i i would really love sort of going on from this book um to perhaps try and sort of create like an online course or at the moment what i'm doing is using the the website and the facebook pages to expand on on the different subjects in in the book but um yeah so there may be an online course coming later <laughs> i think oh kathy this has been an absolute pleasure and delight thank you so much for coming on to the show i hope that everybody listening realizes that I hope you realise that your story matters, no matter how ordinary it may seem to you, it's not. 
people, some, someone somewhere will be glad you wrote your book. Um, and I know that's the case with um, Kathy's book. Thank you for um, telling us some of your story. Thank you for giving us a sneak peek into your next book, which I'm very excited about. Um, and yeah, if you're if you're listening and you want to get a copy of Kathy's book, you can go to rubbingshoulderswiththebest.co.uk. You can find out more about her business on her website. All of these links will be in the show notes. And if you can't find anything, then email me, vicky at vickyfraser.com, and I will sort that out for you. But all that's left to say is, Kathy, thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm going to get you back when you've written your next book. Oh, it's been great. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it. <laughs> it's brilliant. So that was an absolute delight. Um, thanks again, Kathy, for uh, coming on to the 1000 Authors Show. I really hope that you enjoyed listening to that podcast as much as I enjoyed recording it. Um, I hope that it has inspired you. I hope that if you have ever thought among the thousands of other people that I can't write a book because I don't have an interesting story to tell. Um, I hope that you realize now that you're wrong about that and that you do have an interesting story to tell and that someone somewhere, many people will be glad that you wrote it down because tiny stories are the way that we connect with each other. They are the way that we, um, they are the way that we change the world. You know, if we don't tell these stories, like Kathy said um, about her next book, the next book that she wants to write, her generation of you know adults when she was a child did not talk about things. They didn't talk about things that needed to be talked about. And so this is really important. Tell your story. Tell please tell your story. Um, and if you are after a bit of inspiration, you can get Kathy's book um, from rubbing shoulders with the best.co.uk. Uh, if you want a bit of a helping hand, as Kathy said, I did not, I promise I didn't prompt her to, <laughs> to plug my book or anything like that. And I'm really grateful that she did. So thank you, Kathy. Um, but you can get a copy of my book um, from my website. You can go to how the hell do you write a book.com uh, or you can go to moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash by the book. Um, they will take you to the same place. Also available on Amazon, but let's not give Jeff any more money eh? so you can get you can get my book there I'm um, also just about to I'm just about to kick off a three-month book writing program the weird and wonderful book society so if you want to get your first draft and maybe more done in the next three months we're starting first week of July running through to the end of September uh, there'll be a break uh, if you want more information please drop me an email vicky at moxiebooks.co.uk and I will send you the curriculum and if you want you can book a free 15 minute call with me to ask me all about that program I'm really excited about it I've got a couple of people booked on already um, I have limited number of space I've got a maximum of 15 spaces that I'm opening this up for this year so um, let's get it done if you've had a book in your head if you've had a book clanging around in your head and you want to get it out there let's do it let's do it. I will help you. Um, a group of amazing people will help you too. Uh, you can find out more about that by emailing me, vicky at moxiebooks.co.uk. Uh, I will be back same time next week with Joe. Joe will be back. Um, so thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed this podcast, please go and rate us and review us. Five stars. Um, share it with other people if you think other people will enjoy the podcast. Share it on social media. Share it by email. Share it everywhere you can. And thank you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. 